good day. Welcome to All oh My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. I wish to come before you and we will talk about relationships in regards to the husband and the wife. Also, we're going to take time to pray also for the weakness in our infirmities when we are vulnerable. And so sometimes we have weaknesses and at the same token, God allows us to yield and trust him in his plan and so that we can continue to conquer our obstacles and those that those things that challenge us on a daily basis and this is not just for husband and wife but on all relational relationship matters and as a individual as well as human beings in this world being believers of christ jesus hallelujah let's go in prayer heavenly father we thank you. You are our Abba Father who intercedes before the Father for us. You are Jesus Christ, our living Savior. And we thank you, Lord God, that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, Lord God, that in you we live, we move, and we have our being. And we can do nothing without your help. And so, Lord God, we ask for your help during the season of challenge and also during the summer season when children are home from school and need extracurriculum activities to do and help us to find the resources to um, allow our children to participate in and also to yield ourselves to our our friends who would help and aid in our family um, situations where we need the help but we don't choose to ask but you said, ask anything in your name. We shall have the things that we ask if we ask you, Lord God. So we ask humbly before you that you would help those that are in need. And also that you would continue to watch over the children as they further their education, who are in transition, who have graduated from high school, college, um, and universities this year. So we thank you, Lord God. Those who are in transition, who have to repeat a grade, who have to report to summer school or or have been set back to another grade. So we just ask, Lord God, that your demonstration of your grace will work in them mightily and give them the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to continue to go further in that education and to never give up. We ask this all in your most holy, precious name. Amen and amen. Now, in the Bible, in Romans 8, 26, it reads, So too, also, the Holy Spirit, who comes to our aid, comes to our help, and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer. Just like now, we don't know what prayer to offer until it comes up, and then we have an issue or we have a challenge, then we pray. But oftentimes, there could be other challenges that we have not been made aware of and then the Lord opens our eyes and the Spirit will pray for us upon those weaknesses that are discovered because He who is, the, who is God allows us to have the Holy Spirit who demonstrates His will towards us. Amen. He never leaves us nor forsakes us and He's implanted a seed within us and every believer, His Spirit. His spirit of holiness, his spirit of love, his spirit of comfort. And therefore, thereby we are comforted because the Holy Spirit comes to our aid, interceding for our behalf. It says, for we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought to. You know, not selfish prayers, but worthy of God to answer and to hear us. It says, but the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplications and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And it continues on in Romans 8, 27. And he who searches the hearts of men, meaning all humankind, knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes and pleads and beckons before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. So we are assured 
can know that God being a partner in their in labor, all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, his choice, his design, his will. So we thank you, Lord God, for we know that all things are working together for our good because we are called according to your purpose and your design in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Lord, for covering all our bases, even the things that we can't even articulate that we need prayer for. Pray, pray for our country, pray for our nations, pray for our enemies, pray for the other nations that are suffering, who are in chaos. Pray for those who had demonstration of floods in our, our nation, which was New Jersey, Burlington area. So keep all in prayer. And, and that prayer and praying for others allow us to continue to show compassion one to another. And, and God enjoys that when we stand in the gap for each other. And we th thank God for that. And thank God for fellow humankind like you to do that and to stand in the gap and pray for each other. Now, I am going to read some of the highlights. It says, prayer, the power of prayer, or the power of a praying husband by Stormy O. Martin. And this is addition for military personnel, which is not to be placed on um, sale. So this was given to us when we go overseas or we give this as a chaplain. We give these to our marital couples or those who want wish to pray or pray for each other and to keep harmony and stay connected to their spouse when they go overseas. The book here, of course, she is the author, which is Stormy o. Martin. But there's some significant things that as a woman you can also uh, glean from. And so some of the points that in chapter one, if you ever go get this book, The Power of a Praying Husband, and we just celebrated Father's Day. So happy Father's Day and continue on and, and continue to bathe your significant other, bathe your, your spouse and prayers. And there are some highlights in chapter one. It says the, that your prayers may not be hindered. And it reads, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, with your wife, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, as being ears together of grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. 1 Peter 3, 7. A lot of, oftentimes you can have um, rhetoric and um, theology where it says weaker vessels, but we already know we are in a society where women are empowered. Don't call me weak or what have you. Um, oftentimes we see in the book of Genesis when you read from the beginning that they always point the finger to Eve who was deceived, not Adam. But Adam both, Adam and Eve both partook of the fruit of good and evil. So therefore, Eve was to receive the, the pains and labor and also the man... He would always have to um, have the adversity of the enemy upon his shoulders. So there was a different uh, mixtures of consequences that resulted. And so that's why we as women need to continue to keep a, a, a shield, a covering over our heads. Even if you're not married, that God is your husband. He is your loyal husband. He is your covering. And those that are married, obviously, you know that your husband's your covering and that he will continue to bathe your mind. Amen. And words and, and knowledge of truth, of compassion and to not to cause you to feel um, less dignified because you are the weaker vessel. It's just an example in the Genesis as well as in concrete terms that we ought to show compassion as sometimes literally some men are more sensitive than women are and then we as women have to take a breather and say i have to know who i'm dealing with and take my time it's just relationship um temperaments that you have to be aware of 
Okay, so that is the case of 1 Peter 3, 7. Dwell with each other with understanding. Have an honor to one another that your prayers be not hindered. Again, pray with understanding. Dwell with each other with understanding. Know your temperaments. Know how to get along and know how to get back connected. Honor your wife and also and let you guys continue to grow together as one flesh as God joins you guys together that your prayers may not be hindered I had the pleasure of, of marrying one of my classmates um, not one yeah one of my classmates in May and it was a beautiful wedding um, in um, Barrington Rhode Island so as God does that mysteriously thing to bring them and they become one so you can see the display of that when you see wedding ceremonies and it's so beautiful so awesome but when you take all different things off after the wedding after the event a couple weeks down or uh, you know after the honeymoon phase is over then you have the testing and the the understanding of how can I understand this person better how can I dwell with my mate much better my spouse much better and they go through those different stages. So that's the awesomeness and uniqueness of God that we continue to uh, allow each other to grow, but at the same token, staying connected and staying fully of having full understanding of each other. And so another point she mentions was in um, page 35, be of one mind. How is it to be of one mind? It says in Matthew 12, 25, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, emptiness. So it's a place of a pastureless land. There's nothing growing that when it's divided, you can't grow, you can't prosper. It's, it's chaotic. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. So how can you build when you're divided? So oftentimes when when you're trying to build and there's chaos and confusion, it's hard to plant something and to thrive in a chaotic situation. So that is the, the frightening situations that could be when we're not of one mind. And so she mentions prayer is a key to keep you to be of one mind. The second is to be compassionate. And I'll read this script for, for you verbatim on page 37. It says, have you ever seen your wife suffering, but you don't know what to do about it? Some men become impatient with that. Others feel so at a loss or overwhelmed by it that it causes them to withdraw or even become distant, I would say. It says, if you recognize that happening to you, ask God to give you a heart of compassion so instructing yourself, so when you see your heart dissipating and um, becoming withdrawn from your spouse, okay, that is the time to ask God for compassion towards your wife. It says, if you recognize that happening to you, ask God to give you a heart of compassion. To be compassionate toward your wife is to have a deep sympathy for any area in which she suffers and to have a strong desire to alleviate the suffering oftentimes I, I just wanted to pinpoint um, that everything that a person goes through is not always your responsibility sometimes we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart and oftentimes we all should do this lean not into our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledge God and he will direct our steps some travails requires just the trust of God with that individual and all you can do is cover that person in prayer that they will do the same so I read a book I think um, um, by T Bishop T.D. Jakes at one time and I think it was regarding uh, the prayer of a uh, prayer of a powerful wife or something like that and his wife Sarita Jakes mentioned that she was going through grief of her loved one and there was some so much going on that was in inner turmoil that he couldn't secure her he couldn't secure her or comfort her 
even to the degree of grief. So there's different things of places where you, you are still going to be comforting her, but at the same token, that you can't, she mentions the suffers that you have to have a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. That's God's job to also do that. And she continued to encounter his presence in that grief and suffering. So I don't want you to feel that you have to be God for her, but she has to be at a place to be receptive to his presence as well as you guard her, you know, guard her in prayer and su submit her to prayer and that God will cover her. And I appreciate you praying for her and doing everything that you need to do for your spouse. But some of the sufferings we do go through, sometimes it's a, a God encounter and that the experience that she receives via, via comfort from God can only come from God. So I just wanted to pinpoint that. And number three, it reads, be loving. It says, number three, be loving to your spouse, your wife. It says, Jesus loves us with fidelity. Everybody know what fidelity, you know what infidelity is, but what is fidelity? Of course, loyalty, purity, and also to have constancy and passion, no matter how imperfect we are. Someone said, in what does the, each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it all ends with a Y, right? And we, and I used to be a supply troop, so therefore I used to have to make sure everything stays constant and have the right quantity, and et cetera, et cetera. And it was like some some days if it's not constant, if it doesn't begin, ends with the Y, I could never get that joke. But we as human beings, our names does not always end with the Y. There's going to be some times when it's going to be interrupted. And we're not going to show consistency. And, of course, we are imperfect, as she mentions. It says, if a man doesn't love his wife in that same way, he will abuse his authority and his headship. And as a result, will abuse her. So if they're not in constant, um, committed purity and constancy and passion, there's a tendency to be abused. Okay? It says, because you are one with your wife, you must treat her the way you would your own body. I also read in one of these postings, it says, things were meant to be used. And people were meant to be guided, but if other things are, if it's flipped, then it becomes a manipulative situation and you don't want to get yourself into that situation. And so she continues on, you wouldn't do anything deliberately to hurt or destroy it. You love it and care for it. Let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. So... And it says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is, in, when it is in your power of your hand to do so. That's in Proverbs 3.27. So when you have the good to be loving, to be kind, don't use that as an opportunity to be careless and reckless with your spouse. Okay, number four, be tenderhearted, okay? We spoke about that a little bit, you know, to be tenderhearted, to have a caring relationship with each other, to have patience, to bear each other with, when they have weaknesses, okay? And so it, it reads at the bottom of the page 39, ask him to show you how they are complete complement to your strength. Remember that though the ways you and your wife are the same can unite you. The ways you are different can keep things interesting. Interesting. So as a consultant, a behavioral consultant, we call those weaknesses areas as blind spots. So if you know each other's blind spots, you can help bear each other and bear the load. And and to to sometimes not poke fun, but to understand that's again goes back to dwell with your husband or your wife with understanding and so you're you're coping with that as a no longer a, a weakness for you anymore but it becomes a, a loving strength as you guys grow continue to grow in God together number five be courteous okay and sometimes 
is sometimes people say, is Chivalry dead? Like, open the door, you know, for her. Or either, you know, sometimes people say that men are supposed to, that's tradition. Man works outside, women stay home and do the laundry and do the... You guys can take turns. This is modern era, 2019. So, some people take turns. Some people take out the garbage. A lady sometimes take out the garbage. Sometimes the man take out the garbage. Sometimes the man do the dishes while the lady goes out grocery shopping. So, it's a, it's a helping relationship in marriage. So, that is a blessing. So, say be courteous. And it says, there is nothing more wonderful than the male voice. It is strong and deep and rich. And the sound of a male, of, of male voices singing together is one of the most beautiful sounds on earth. Have you ever heard of any quartets or gospel group male singers? You can even look up one of these gospel music singers. They are the whinings. If you look up these um, gospel um, greats, you can probably hear their beautiful sound, singing voices and it's in harmony and it's so beautiful as an example it says but the male voice can also be terrifying especially to women and children so be careful how you present yourself in your approach when you're at home among your children among a, you know other friends and adults because that voice even though you may not think you're carrying a heavy tone but the male voice already has that tone already. And that's what she's saying. It can be especially terrifying to women and children when it's, you know, higher pitch. It says, most men have no idea about the power of their voice. When a man speaks, his words have the power to create and the power to destroy. His words can be like a sharp knife that wounds and kills or soothing balm that heals and brings life. Balm is something that cures and brings healing. And often we know when you read the word of God, it says, my word will, will, will not return to me void. God says, it shall prosper the thing I sent it to do. So when God shows forth his word, when it's sent out by you and I, and we speak God's word, that becomes life. And that becomes effective. And that allows things to, we get to have authority in the earth by using God's word and to allow God's word to come into fruition through bathing of prayer and believing on God's word. And it says, your wife was created as a gift from God to complete you. Nor was a man created for a woman, but woman for the man. But she must be treated as the gift from God. So don't lose that train of thought. Don't lose that train of, of, of giftedness in your wife. That she's a gift from God for you. That she is, excuse me, and in order for that complete blessing to happen in your life, your wife will prove to be your greatest asset if you value and honor her. If you continue to do that, you would see she is the greatest asset in your life. The Bible tells us that whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And that's in 1 John 3, 22. So pray for God to help you speak to your wife in a courtesy, courteous way that is pleasing in his sight. And to convict your heart when you do not. So women, as you were listening as well, those are also insightful things that we can do when we see that our spouse or significant others are not doing the same and not treating us with courtesy or or act of compassion or sympathizing not that we need a pity party but we could ask that god will bring conviction in those areas where he can be more you know sympathizing or more courtesy and show compassion or be more kind and loving in those areas if his heart has become callous or become a, a, a terrifying sight where you don't wish to be so you have power in prayer so that's the name of the book the power of a praying husband. So these are some good tool sets to keep. And it says, she says, please pray for yourself that you will be the husband God wants you to be. You will be, you will know how to really love your wife. 
pray that you will be led by the Holy Spirit in all decisions, that you will be delivered from negative behavior, and you will speak words that build and not destroy. You will have the desire to pray for your wife, and you will grow spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. Okay? So those are the things that would be very instructional for you to keep. And then in closing, we have a power of prayer, prayer power at the end. Again, it reads, Lord, creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Show me where my attitude and thoughts are not what you would have them to be, especially toward my wife. Convict me when I am being unforgiving. Help me to let go of any anger. Again, this is a prayer. Okay? So you're letting, you're le releasing it, unleashing it all to God. Okay? Help me to let go of any anger so that confusion will not have a place in my mind. If there's behavior in me that needs to change, enable me to make changes that last. Whatever you reveal to me, I will confess to you as sin. Make me a man after your own heart. Enable me to be the head of my home and family that you created me to be. Lord, show me how to really cover and name your wife, how to cover this person, how to cover Sarah, how to cover um, Josephine in prayer. Enable me to dwell with her with understanding and give honor to her so that my prayers may not be hindered. Renew our love for one another. Heal any words that have caused a rift between us, a disconnection. Heal any wounds that have caused any rift. Give me patient understanding and compassion. That's what he's asking for. Give me patience, understanding, and compassion in your prayer. Help me to be loving, tender-hearted, and courteous to her just as you ask me in your word. In 1 Peter 3, verse 8. Enable me to love her the way that you do. And finally, Lord, I pray that you would bring Josephine or Sarah, whoever your wife's name, name her, and speak her name out loud, that you would bring such and such and me to a new place of unity with one another. Make us to be of the same mind. Show me that I need to, what I need to do in order to make that come about. Give me words that heal, not wound. Fill my heart with your love so that what overflows through my speech will be words that build up and not tear down. Convict my heart when I don't live your way. Help me to be the man and husband that you would want me to be. Amen and amen. May that bless your heart, your soul, your mind, your spirit. And may you continue to go forth and live a power and a, a powerful and effective prayer life in Jesus' most precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you.